Are you ready to take your streaming or media creation career to the next level? Are you new to streaming or are you looking to work out the kinks of your XSplit setup? You've come to the right place. I'm Ebos Vox, your stream professor, here to make tech easier and more fun, and today we begin my new XSplit Masterclass for 2020. You may have seen or heard of my OBS Masterclass or my regular stream guides content. I'm here to make sure that you are ready to stream. Let's quickly talk about what this course will entail and then jump into some first steps with the software. All episodes will contain time codes in the description down below if you want to jump to a specific part. If you're already familiar with something or you just want to learn a specific thing, uh, this course would not be possible without the support of the XSplit team themselves. So huge shout out to them for sponsoring this course and supporting free tech education. Firstly, this masterclass is a multi-video endeavor. Just like my previous courses, this course will feature roughly 15 to 20 individual videos covering a gamut of topics on how to get started with and using XSplit Gamecaster and Broadcaster for your live streams, with a full video containing all of the episodes in one viewing for those that prefer to keep everything right in one place together for bookmarks and things like that. A playlist containing all of the individual episodes will be linked below. Check that before asking questions as I've likely already answered them in the other videos. First, let's jump into getting started with XSplit Gamecaster. I'm going to assume you've already downloaded and installed the software. If not, well, go on and do that. If you're looking for XSplit Broadcaster coverage, look in the playlist as I'll have a whole separate set of videos covering that as well as it does differ from XSplit Gamecaster. The team has recently released a whole new version of Gamecaster, which is what we'll primarily be focusing on, but Broadcaster users won't be left out. Just ch check that playlist. You may notice that there are other downloads presented to you as well once you download Gamecaster. We'll cover these later. If you want to download XSplit for yourself and haven't already, consider using my affiliate link in the description down below to let them know that I sent you encourage, and encourage them to keep supporting free tech education. It's time to flip on over to the desktop and get set up. Once you have installed the software and launch it here, you are now presented with a window asking where you would specifically like to stream. By default, you can stream to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, or Mixer, or you can log in directly with your XSplit account and manage your streaming settings for like a stream key and things like that separately from there. We're actually going to start by signing into Twitch, although instructions will be very similar across platforms and I'll cover where your settings may differ as we get to it in the videos. So of course, click log in with your platform and log in on your platform of choice to authorize XSplit to access your account. You will be prompted to either create an XSplit account if you don't have one already or link your existing XSplit account and sign into that. Go ahead and do it and you're now prompted here with the XSplit Gamecaster. All right, once you are loaded in here to the core software itself, you may see a blank layout or a different theme than what I have here. Don't panic. I've, you know, I was already testing this and have set up my own layout, but you'll have something similar to this. And let's walk through what is actually available to you in XSplit Gamecaster's new studio layout. Of course, you have in the big middle screen is just your overall preview of XSplit, you know, of what is displaying itself. This is what your stream would see, for example. So you get to see all of your different layouts and what's going on here. But below that are your different scenes or your different layouts that you actually have available to switch between. So this is the main scene for the Zenith theme that I currently have applied here. But then there's an intermission scene where a webcam and a game might be detected here as well. And then there's a background image with some text stream powered by XSplit. And of course, by mousing over it, I can now edit scene. We'll click that in a moment. And then we have a starting soon screen, which is a basic image. And we still have the consistent little bar at the bottom of each of these. And then you have a custom scene option where I just added gameplay stream by itself, just kind of left alone here and the add scene button. You also have the option to select what kind of transition is used when switching between scenes and how long they are. So right off the bat, hit the ground running. If you open the software, all you have to do is make sure that your sources are detected. So you see right now it doesn't detect that I have any game running and it doesn't know what to use as a webcam for me. So I'm not entirely ready to stream, but if you have a layout, you know, preset already to go, you can get ready to stream in just a couple seconds. And in fact, if you don't have a layout or don't like the one that's selected for you automatically here, I'm going to jump ahead and then we'll come back to it and kind of establish what's going on. But if you click the themes tab next to the studio tab in the top left hand corner here, then you can go on and choose 
from a wide selection of themes available built into XSplit here, which is really cool because they will all get set up automatically for you. So that Zenith one is pretty cool and kind of similar to my art style, but let's let's see if there's anything else we want to use. I'm kind of liking that Party Bus one, although I'm not big into Fortnite. I have a few others. These are under popular. There's some latest releases. You got animated ones if you specifically want to make sure that you have some animated graphics going on here. That one's clearly Clash Royale looking. That one's kind of neat. Just for the sake of brevity, I'm going to choose this Dauntless one here. So I'm going to click it. Make sure you want everything. Start main intermission. That's fine. It gives you some previews and click add to studio. Now you'll notice if you did this and you were like, wait a minute, I didn't really want that. By clicking add to studio, you actually don't lose any of your progress because now we have the theme we were originally working with, which I just titled gameplay face cam. This is like its own separate set of sources and themes and layouts and scenes and things like that managed separately. And you can clearly, as you see here, there's a big sidebar. You could fill this with a lot of different ones. So if you play different games and want different layouts catered to different games, you can manage that in the sidebar here and you can right click, go to settings and give them different names and icons so that you know which one is which. So that is where your themes are going. And we'll go back to that theme tab in a few minutes to actually kind of, you know, look at it and dig in a little bit further. But I just wanted to show you that if you're wanting to, you know, just get up and running super quick, that option's available to you. So now we're looking at our new theme we have set up here. And this is our main scene, which is going to have our gameplay in the background, our face cam in the top right here, and then some text alerts. And we have intermission and start. So this is what, you know, the main UI you're going to be working with here is setting up your scenes and managing this. And so we'll go into sources here in a moment, but let's take a step back again and look at the bigger window here. As in the top right, you have 24 seven help. If you need XSplit support, they are ready to help you with a you know chat system. And I believe they have other systems. If you go to their website directly, you can see here they have 55 plus support staff ready to go right here. If you want to ask a question built into the app, which is pretty cool. I'm going to close that and not waste anybody's time. You have your profile management, so you can manage your account settings or the app settings itself. We'll dive into these in just a second. Uh, but if you need to log out or switch users for some reason, you have that option available here. Stream events. So this is if someone follows you or subscribes to your stream or donates to you or whatever while you're streaming, those will pop up here so that you always have them to reference. This is really handy because a lot of the times streamers in the middle of an intense battle, you know, the alerts may go off, but you just kind of ignore them for now, focus on your game. And then when you have a breather moment or in between matches, then you come back and check through the event list and, oh, hey, Joe, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the 500 bits. Holy cow, I tier two sub. Are you crazy? And, you know, do that. So that is available to you. And then, of course, you do have stream chat available here as well. So that while you're live, you can keep an eye on chat and see it with your stream and not need a separate window to manage it, which is really handy. Down here in this bottom bar, which is all that we have left at the moment, you have a time to indicate how long you've been recording or gone live, whether you're online or offline, how many viewers you have. And you can actually toggle that to just hide it if you don't want that messing with your head or whatever. I actually had a whole video about basically hiding the ability to view how many viewers you have so that because it, it can do some psychological stuff to you if you're like oh i don't have enough viewers what the heck's going on with me and then you're just like i locked on that viewer count instead of focusing on building an engaging live stream you can turn that off then you have another access to the settings cog which again we'll look at in a minute you got stream and record buttons you also have this button right here which will allow you to connect different accounts to live stream too we currently have twitch selected down here you have buttons to mute and adjust the volume for your microphone and you can actually change microphone devices so we'll change that to chat mic on my go xlr we'll cover all of the audio video device management in the next episode but just letting you know and then same thing with your system sound you can choose the device and adjust volume levels then down here you have options to manage your input sources we'll dive into this very deeply as i just mentioned in the next episode but real quick real quick here you do have the option of either capturing a specific game or window on this computer or capturing a console or other capture device instead of your pc game which is really handy to have a button to basically switch between console or pc mode right here and then you have the option to choose camera source and I don't really have any working on this machine, so I'll have to fix that for the next video. Let's go ahead and open up that settings menu, as I mentioned before. So I click the cog down here in the bottom right. Here you have your streaming, recording, devices, hotkeys, advanced, language, a whole bunch of settings that you need to know. You'll probably be referencing this often when you're first getting your, 
you know, getting everything set up in the way that you like it. So remember, you know, you have two options to access it, either clicking your name over here in the top right and going to settings or the cog in the bottom right. So two different places. Uh, under streaming, you can then choose your stream output location. So even though I'm signed in with my Twitch account under accounts, you can see here I'm connected to Twitch, Evil's Vox. I'm signed in with Twitch. That's just how it's syncing up for XSplit. I could actually still stream to YouTube or something if I wanted. And so you do still need to manually select where you are streaming, be it YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or Mixer. I'm going to choose Twitch. Twitch connected, Evil's Vox. You might have noticed something there. We'll come back to that. And then you can choose automatic settings and leave that be which is going to be fine for most people. The automatic settings, that is something that's really great about XSplit, is it handles so much of the work for you. Now, that's ironic to say as someone making, you know, a master class for it, but if you just want to get up and streaming, Twitch, automatic, close, let's go. Obviously, choose your devices, but you're ready to go, which is pretty cool. You will see by, the, by saying that I'm streaming to Twitch, my stream events has actually gone ahead and filled in. So I have a big list of my most recent followers and subscribers here which is really handy to have in case for whatever reason you wanted to shout a new one out. You can see I have a bunch of recent ones despite not being streaming uh, as a result of following me from a recent video I posted, which is how a lot of streamers actually gain followers. And you can see here it also filled in the little blurred section in the top right of the stream layout with my username, which is kind of cool. Down here under the webcam as well. And now my stream chat box is now functioning. So now I can start sending chat messages. Testing that out. Nice. Opening settings back up. If we don't want to rely on XSplit's automatic settings, which is fine. If you want to, that's fine. If not, click the custom button. It's a scary button. You can always go back to automatic if you don't want to use it. But if you're brave, click it. Oh, there's a lot of options, huh? We're going to make this really easy for you. Ingest server. Pretty much just always use automatic. It doesn't even... You can change it. And you can actually view here. So this is the latency to your server. In most cases, you want to choose the lowest latency server available to you. However, if you're choosing that manually, there may be cases where you have a different server that's lower latency than the one that you chose last time. And you may want to check that before you stream every time. But theoretically, in most cases, you want to choose whichever one is at the top of this list. Like there's no reason you would want to choose something really, really far away with a low latency because that's going to impact potential packet loss where your stream actually corrupts midstream or add a lot of delay between you talking on stream and your viewers seeing that on stream and actually responding to you and all sorts of stuff. So for the most part, choose whichever's fastest. But if you're having some weird connection issues to Twitch where, you know, something's not going right, you could come in here and manage it and maybe choose a different one if desired. Next up, we have resolution. Now this will choose, you know, the actual resolution, which is the video size, you know, 1080p HD, 720p HD, 480p standard definition, 1440p quad HD, these are all options available to you, mostly based, I believe, on your screen resolution. Now, keep in mind, what resolution you choose here should be kind of a pretty complicated decision. And we'll talk about this more in a future video. But the setting is here. I recommend most people streaming with 720p. There's not enough bitrate for Twitch and, in most cases, Mixer to really stream higher than 720p at any reasonable quality. But they do give you the options to manually manage that. Or you could choose 900p if you want, which is... Silly in my opinion, but a lot of people do it, and that's fine. And the option is available to you here. We'll talk a little bit more about diving into these settings in the future. Codec, basically all you need to know at the moment. Again, we'll talk about more. Uh, X264 uses your processor, so if you're on an older machine or something that isn't like a very high-end i9, i7, or Ryzen 7 or 9 processor, you pretty much always want graphics card. Now, this specifically for me, since I'm running an NVIDIA graphics card, it chooses NVIDIA NVENC. Uh, however, this is what the option would look like for you on AMD. Then you choose your frame rate, which is easy because you only have two options for a reasonable stream, 30 or 60. Which do you want? For most game streams, unless the game itself only runs at 30 FPS, as is the case with many console games, uh, 60 FPS is what you want. If you're just doing a webcam stream or a desktop stream or a slow moving like a card game or stream or like I said, some older console games that only run at 30 FPS, 30 FPS will actually get you better quality per your bit rate. And that's an option available to you as well. Then you can manually specify your bit rate to put in 6,000 because that's the max that Twitch supports and my internet connection supports it. I don't need to say we're going to talk about it again. Uh, stream delay. You can actually manually delay your stream or record locally. And then you can choose if you need to split up those files for some reason. So if you don't want to record locally, you just want to push it to Twitch. Leave that unchecked. Under recording, you have similar options. Automatic or custom. And then you can manage all of those again. 
and this tells you, tells you where your recordings are saved. Then you have devices where you can choose all of your different audio devices and your webcam. So your microphone, your system speakers, and your webcam and microphone boost. We'll cover these in more detail in the next episode. Hotkeys. This is how you set up hotkeys to manage your whole program. We'll have a whole episode dedicated on some advanced tricks with that. But for example, if you want to make a hotkey for starting and stop streaming, for taking a screenshot of your stream, OBS doesn't have this feature. They should. Right here. You can set up a hotkey for that. Uh, you can set up push to talk, switch, manually switching scenes. You can manage all of that right here. They also have a default hotkey that is always there for manually togging the in-game overlay, which is a pretty cool feature of Gamecaster. By default, it's on control tab. You can remap that to what you want. We'll look at that in a little bit. Advanced settings. That's enabling the in-game heads-up display that we just talked about. <laughs> language is, of course, choosing your system language. Accounts is managing what accounts you're signed into for streaming. You can sign into whichever ones you want and then switch between them under the streaming settings. And then about just lets you know which version of XSplit you're running on. So as you can tell by now, for the most part, other than device selection, which it will rely on the default devices in your system, my system's just a little finicky because I like to mess with crazy stuff. For the most part, it makes it very easy to just automatically get set up and ready to stream without having to change a whole heck of a lot, which is pretty cool. And you can see where it says no game detected. If I actually do launch a video game, it will automatically detect that. And theoretically, you only need a couple clicks to just get started streaming if you really don't want to mess with stuff. Like, I'm going to launch... All right, so I launched Unreal Tournament 2004, and you can see here, it's automatically detecting Unreal Tournament 2004. For whatever reason, this window is like forcing itself on top. But you can see here, it's ready to rock. I didn't have to change anything. I just launched the game, and it's like, hey, that's your game. Let's play. Really cool. And real quick as a teaser, if we want to take a look at the in-game heads-up display, if I hit Control-Tab, ho, 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 this thing is sick. So you have a bunch of different widgets here. You have your stream chat. You have your stream events, your stream info, which is your stream title, the game you're streaming, uh, when you started it, how many viewers you have, followers, how many hosts, tiers, subs you got since the stream. And you can switch streams or switch scenes, rather, mute and manage your microphone and system sounds and start and stop recording and streaming all from this heads up display without needing another monitor even, which is pretty cool. And you can set up pinned widgets. So by default, it's empty, but then we can add a widget and say stream chat done we want that in the top left let's add a widget for stream stats actually no we don't want stream stats we want stream status you can move that over here in the top right corner we're done now we hit control tab to close it and boom over top of our game but not captured in xsplit itself we've got chat and our stream settings bonkers absolutely bonkers so lastly, let's take another look real quick here at the theme store. I just wanted to go back through it again since I, I mainly rushed through it to just show you how quickly you could jump through it if you wanted to. But we do have, you know, a big sorting thing. You can search for game names like Modern Warfare if that's what you stream and ideally get a game theme suited to that. You may have to search Call of Duty instead. This is my first time searching, so it probably has to like cue the results. Yeah, I just canceled the search. You can search for whether your an your overlays are animated with a bunch of graphics, which would be really cool, but would also be harder to compress. So if you're streaming at a really low bit rate, you actually don't want an animated overlay because, or if you have a lower end system, you don't want an animated overlay because they're harder to run, like specs wise, processing power wise, and they take more bit rate in order to produce a higher quality. So if you're at streaming at a low bit rate, say three megabits per second or 3000 kilobits per second, if you have a big flashy overlay that, you know, has text streaming at the bottom and an animated webcam frame and all of that, your actual game quality is going to suffer a lot. So in that case, you specifically don't want an animated overlay. You want a static one, which will have more still images instead of animated stuff. And so you can search specifically based on that. You can search based on genres. So if I want an IRL based one, I don't think they have any yet, but they will soon. If I want a first person shooter one, there are plenty because it's very, you know, it's a popular genre. I kind of like that one. You can choose based, you know, on ones built specifically for first person shooters. That Skytech one looks pretty cool as well. And then you can choose just based on colors entirely. So if I want a pink one, I'll find one with some involvement of pink, like that fiber one right there that I can hit the ground running using. Or that contract one, which looks, they have Destiny running in the background. Pretty cool. So you have all of these options available to you. And then if you click the theme, you can actually, as I mentioned, you can see when it was released, you can see screenshots. 
you can see it with different colors so you can actually switch the color that the theme is working with so it shows you all of the colors that are available for it you can choose to see how many people have downloaded it and then you can actually choose if you specifically don't want a scene from this theme for some reason you can uncheck it so if i don't want intermission i can uncheck that and then add it to studio give it a second to download because this is downloading from their store even though you're not buying this to your copy and then you can start editing and we're, we're gonna we're gonna tour the editor here we're gonna click edit scene and this is actually how you manage how your stream is going to look so you can change your text elements you, you can control what widgets are shown so if i don't want the tip alert that one can just go away it'll actually show tip alerts versus follower alerts so if i hide the tip alert it's just the follower alert if i had the follower alert it's only a host alert you can actually change which ones of these are used and obviously they're not all going to show at the same time there that's just where they pop up so for example follower alert i can actually i can actually move where the alerts are going so if i don't want them in that top left corner I can move them to the bottom kind of right lower third here. That's where I want alerts. That way this top isn't super crowded. It's off in its own space. You can adjust where things go and you can see here, you actually have this nice little grid system which helps you align these things with other elements and other aspects on your canvas. This is like a big Photoshop canvas or photo editing canvas or video editing canvas. You can align this. So this is currently aligned where the bottom of this is at the top of the webcam frame and the center of this is at the right edge of this overlay text. Then I can come down here. You have labels for your recent tips and things like that. And I can actually change what kind of label it is. So if I don't want it to be a recent tip, I can be, it's a star or like Facebook and I can flip it. I flip it in Y. I can change the animations that they come in at. Really cool stuff. I can change the animations. I can change the position. I can rotate them. If I want like a messy theme where I have these two just kind of rotated off axes there. Maybe that's what you want. You can do it. You can come down here to the webcam frame. Open up the file. I can sit here and change what the text says. Instead of saying my username, follow on Instagram. Now that could be what I want my Twitch viewers to see, or maybe that's just a hint for you watching right now. I can move my webcam frame. Maybe I want that up in the top left-hand corner, and I want this little identifier for me to be kind of down in the middle. Or maybe I don't want that all at all because it's kind of redundant to have your name on your webcam frame and your name on kind of an overlay thing. These are just options available to you. I can just turn that off. Although you may notice here, it's a social item and you can actually change what icon is shown. So it's not just an identifier for me, but I can say, hey, that's my Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I'm going to turn that off for now. It's the webcam frame. You can, of course, again, rotate it. I can say, okay, I'm tired of this pink. I don't want the pink anymore. Let's come up to the settings cog. And we can just change the color entirely to something like blue. You can enable potato mode if you're having too high of a CPU usage and your, you know, computer is struggling. You can come over here to potato mode and enable that and it will try to run better on a lower end PC. If you have advanced mode, you can get even more properties to control your sources. You can see here some more expanded. We're going to dive into those. You can enable snap or disable snapping, what I showed you there before, where if it's aligning with things, you can disable that entirely, and now it won't align to anything if you just want completely full free, unrestricted control and don't want to have to deal with that. I like having it on. It's really handy, especially if you're not forced to it. And you can reset the scene and just set it 100% back to the way you downloaded it, which is always handy because sometimes you just make mistakes. You can change the editor background so that if you don't have a game running, you can basically emulate having a game running. This helps with identifying points of contrast, whether things are visible or not, things like that. So, for example, I'm just going to tell it to run Doom 2016 as my editor background. Third-party apps, you can enable support for Razer Chroma. I don't have any Razer Synapse products at the moment, so I'm going to leave that there. You can add more widgets to the scene if you're not happy with the ones that just came with the theme itself so you can add alerts text labels follower counters cheer counters raid counters you can add follower subscriber raid cheer tip goals you can add hype trains these are built in you don't need third-party plugins for this or anything you don't have to design them yourself you can just add follower or subscriber or tip or cheer trains and just have those ready to go and set them up on a hotkey if you want which is really cool you've got on-screen text chat for your stream chat, a timer if you need to use a timer, an image slideshow for your BRB scene or something, 
a little follow, you know, a little ticker of your recent followers. You can set up a tournament, you know, a stream cup for those donating bits and things like that. That's kind of a default alert thing. You can add the event list as just an overlay instead of like a ticker. You can add a custom transition just right here on the scene. You can also manage whether your theme is set to 4x3 or 16x9 for your webcam frame. You can enable or disable that social item. Those are theme specific options under theme. So other so other themes may have other widgets that you can add from this. And then under specific sources, you can just add those on their own entirely as well. And you can search all the different elements yourself because there's icons and progress bars and web sources and video sources and image sources. So if you have your own custom graphics, you can add those there. Now you may notice at the bottom, I've been ignoring this really handy little toolbar of tools. You can zoom in on your canvas. So if you want to get something lined up exactly precisely where you want it with the right pixel, you can do that by zooming in and then zooming back out, which is really freaking cool. You have a handy button here to quickly enable and disable snapping. You can enable fit to screen. So just fit the view back to screen if you're zooming in and out and want to fit it back. And then you can actually undo your actions and redo them. I got to say, there's a certain other streaming software that I use all the time that I really wish I could undo and redo on. Really freaking cool. Now, once you are ready to stream, make sure you hit save. Make sure you hit save on your scene here. You, you don't want to make all these changes and then close it without saving and lose all of your progress. Lastly, under your widgets here, if you select a specific widget category, you can actually copy the widget itself or duplicate it. You can't duplicate certain widgets. So, you know, if it's an alert or something like that, you can't duplicate it. But my webcam frame, I could maybe duplicate. There we go. Now I have two webcams. Whatever. I'm going to undo that with the handy undo button. <laughs> uh, or you can actually just delete them entirely from these extra buttons that appear here as well. And of course, different sources will have slightly different transform and general properties that you can manage as well. Once you have saved, you can hit the launch the test center and preview what your stream might look like. You can test alerts, see how those show up, test tiers, you can mute the audio so you don't have to deal with the notifications. And once you've decided it looks and works to your fashion, click back, click save, click close, and you're ready to stream. This was just an introductory episode to get you familiar with Gamecaster's UI and controls so that you know what to do moving forward. In the next episode, we'll cover managing your audio and video devices, then setting up some settings and lots of cool stuff from there. Check the playlist for more of those videos and content, and be sure to reference back to this video if you need to get your bearings on how to use the software or get around in it again. Thanks for watching this episode of my XSplit Masterclass. Hit the like button and share it with a friend who might need some help. Subscribe for more education and future episodes of Stream Guides. If you want to support tech education yourself, consider subscribing on Patreon or Floatplane for behind the scenes content and early access to videos and things like that. I'm Eplus Fox and I'll see you next time.